Hello, darling Lean Girls, and welcome back to the Lean Girl Fitcast, your place for motivation and mindset mastery on every step of your fat loss journey. Today, we are talking about that quick fix fat loss fad mindset that has us going into the new year feeling like if we do something extreme, something restrictive, that we are taking drastic action and that we are going to get fast results. Newsflash, this episode is about how this is a terrible strategy and how we are going to move into having a long-term lean body vision this year and how, ironically, this is going to be the fastest way to results because, spoiler alert, I bet in 2023, if you got to the end of it without making much progress, it's because you spent the entire year yo-yoing doing something extreme, giving up on yourself, starting all over again. I know this process way too, way too well for my own liking because I did this for decades. Um, I was always, every Monday it was a new diet, new strategy, new meal plan. And after like 10 years, I still looked the same. In fact, I actually looked worse. And so I'm going to go a bit into why that happens from a scientific perspective biological perspective but of course we are here to talk all about the mindset and how at the end of 2024 I want you to have your best strongest most sculpted body and where that starts is creating that long-term mindset and I have my hunky husband in the house to bring his mindset and psychology tools into the mix to start unpacking this long-term mindset which Obviously, it doesn't just apply to fat loss. For most good things in life, they take time. Absolutely. And having a long-term view and a long-term vision is most of the time, it's better than any quick fix. Yep. The, um, the longest distance between two points is the shortcut. Haven't heard that one before. I just made it up. No, I don't know. I don't know if it makes sense. <laughs> well, well, no, it's, uh, I may have heard it somewhere. I actually can't remember now, but um, it's, uh, it, it makes me think of another saying that the, the quickest way to success is to shorten the distance between failures. But that's a different context. Yes. But I guess what that shows is that there is no shortcut to success. No, there is no shortcut. There, I mean... I, I don't know if I can think of an example where a shortcut ends you in any place that's better than just taking the good, solid, basic foundations and working on them at a slow and sustainable rate. Yeah, but we fall for these traps that make us feel emotionally compelled, which we then justify with logic, to go ahead and, and make the wrong decisions. Yeah. Um, and we think that we're, taking, that we're taking shortcuts. And if we look at the new year, I mean, I'm, I don't know about you, but I have seen a million cleansers, pills, potions, whatever you name it, like let's reset for the next 14 days and eat carrot sticks and celebrate celery. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> like, let's lose however many, 10 kilograms in a week. And unfortunately, that little bug in us that thinks, okay, maybe this is legit, actually makes us feel like, you know what? And, and let me tell you, I get messages from so many girls who are like, Ange, I really want to join the Lean Body Lab. I'll do it once I've done insert extreme thing first. Feeling like, okay, that is a great, they can acknowledge that that is a great long-term sustainable plan for them to lose fat and keep it off. But they still feel like there's another way to just do it a little bit faster. And then when they're there, they'll move over. They'll shift gears. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I really love the analogy that you gave me um, earlier today about sun tanning. Yes. Why don't you share that with us? Yes. So I have been a girl who in my in my past life, no, actually in this life, unfortunately, because I still have some skin marks to show it, um, to, to prove it, is I used to be the girl that would lie in the sun with baby oil and tan when I was a teenager. And I am still using laser to try and get off all of the marks, never mind that it can cause skin cancer, right? But when we think about tanning in the sun or in a tanning bed, of course, what do we want? We want a great looking skin because having a smooth brown skin in our mind is a beautiful result. And of course, the fastest way to do that in our minds is to go and lie in the sun and get a tan. But what is the long-term effect of that? All right, now if we're thinking about, okay, but actually I want a great looking skin in 10 years from now, 
then tanning today would be a very terrible idea, right? Because not only are we going to damage our skin, so our skin is not going to be firm and toned and clear, but it's going to be sun damaged. Um, and never mind the health effects of that, of potentially causing ourselves cancer. And mm. yet still, how many of us are tanning? And so I love that analogy because, by the way, I am also trying to persuade the girls uh, to not tan anymore <laughs> in the sun. Spray tan. We all put the spray tans, girls. Um, but I think that that's such a great one to compare to fat loss because in, even though it's so clear that long term that is a bad strategy, we still do it. And why is that? Yeah. You know, we are sometimes our own worst enemy. Uh, and when I say we, I'm talking about our ego and the way that we perceive ourselves and therefore what we need emotionally in order to feel okay inside. Let me explain, it may be using um, a, a parallel in business. As you know, I work with business leaders. And so, um, you know, we use business case studies. And there are so many business case studies, and I'll share just one with you in a moment, of CEOs who come into a company now, normally, uh, or especially this happens when a new CEO comes in, but even seasoned, you know, pe people who have been a CEO of a, of a company for a long time, this could happen too. And I want you to think about why this is relevant to us as people is because you've heard the saying that we're the CEO of our own life and of our own bodies, of ourselves, right? So think about it in that context. So if your body was a business, uh, you know, and you were the CEO, th th this would be the, the um, uh, parallel. So what often happens is that a new CEO will come in and they'll feel that they need to validate themselves, that they need to get certain results. And they'll also have pressure from the board of the company, from the share, the shareholders. Um, you know, the investors want a return on their, on their money. Everybody's putting pressure that you've got to get results and you've got to get results fast. And so the CEO really feels that they need to prove themselves and that proof comes in the form of validating results. Now, similarly with us, we start a new year, or this could happen any time in the year, we think to ourselves, I gotta prove that I am a certain, that I am disciplined, that I am able to do this, that I am beautiful enough, that, you know, fill in the blank. And so we feel that we, if we don't get results quickly, we're not gonna feel okay inside. We're gonna feel less than. So we engage in activities to get short-term results just so we can feel okay inside. So when you tell me that there are certain girls who are saying to you, I'm going to do your program, but first I got to do this. What that's telling me is that they don't feel okay inside. And they feel that when I reach, when I get that validation, when I hit those results, then I'll feel okay enough to then start thinking long-term. Yes. And that's a major, major problem. Yes. So what lands up happening is um, a CEO will come in, they'll make... Uh, uh, they'll make certain decisions that will get, that it'll show higher stock prices, the profitability will be higher. But in the meantime, what they're doing is they destroy the culture of the company, they destroy the financial, they destroy the uh, production, the performance. And so that kind of, those uh, uh, performance metrics maybe show really positive outcomes and then all of a sudden, everything just crashes down. Mm. And um, a really uh, a good example, and this is an example that was uh, given by Carol Dweck in her book, Mindset, where she was talking about fixed and growth mindset. She was given an example of leaders with a fixed mindset because we've spoken about fixed and growth mindset in previous episodes, and this especially happens when a fixed mindset comes in. Because with a fixed mindset, we think that our results and everything uh, is a reflection of who we are, of our identity, and therefore we feel more compelled to get short-term results to make us feel like our identity is worthy. And, you know, uh, so what what the, uh, happened was the company called Sunbeam, which you know they do all the appliances and yeah. so on. And so in the late 1900s, in, in 1996 to be more specific, they hire a new CEO. His name is Alfred J. Dunlap, and. He, the, the company was uh, struggling a little bit and, and he was known to come in and do these turnarounds. He came in and started cost-cutting cost aggressively, started firing people, uh, uh, closing down uh, manufacturing. And he started doing all of this just to try and get the profitability to be higher. It was very, very short-term short -term thinking. And what happens when, when we're looking for validation is we'll do things that we even know are wrong, that aren't, that aren't honest. Sometimes we're not honest with ourselves, mm. just as Dunlap also wasn't honest with 
the rest of the company. And in fact, just two short years later, when at first people thought that he was being successful, all of a sudden it started to come out that there were financial irregularities. He actually got ousted from the company because so much damage had been done in so many different areas and fraudulent accounting and, and so on. All of that just to just because he wanted to validate his image of being a turnaround specialist. Turnaround guy. But it was none of it was sustainable. Yeah. And I think that brings me back to what I mentioned in the beginning around my own journey and how that yo-yo dieting actually put me in a worse off place than even when I started all of my efforts. Because over those years of doing the extreme diets, what I didn't realize and what I really want girls listening to realize is that the more extreme the diet is, the more muscle you lose, the more metabolic damage you do. And at the end of the day, after all of those treacherous cycles of restricting yourself, feeling terrible, always being super food focused because you're starving, you're restricting yourself, then you have a binge, then you break self-trust with yourself, then you feel terrible. So it's just a whirlwind of all kinds of shit. Um, at the end of the day, you actually look worse and you then have to rebuild all of the muscle that you've now lost. So when and we, you feel worse and you feel worse, of course, and you don't have energy either, right? Everything is not in your favor. And often what we think is, OK, I'm just going to have as much discipline as, and willpower as I can. I'm going to cut my calories as low as possible for as long as possible. I'm going to go and do sweat 4000. <laughs> I'm going to go do sweat 4000 and burn as many calories as I can until I just can't hold up, hold on anymore. And actually what that does is it just sets us up for another binge, for another season of not being able to maintain and we gain all of that weight back. And when we do, even if the number on the scale is the same, we have lost more muscle. We have gained more fat. And we've lost even our integrity with ourselves. The journey has been emotionally treacherous. It's exhausting. And 150% on that point. I love the analogy of sprinting versus walking. When you are sprinting, which is what most people do come January 2024, is that like they're not fit, right? They've been doing nothing. You know, they're not fit when it comes to fat loss, but they go out sprinting out the gates and within a week or two, they're huffing and puffing and they can't and they have to walk back to the starting point, right? Versus if you're like, you know what? I'm going to do a lovely brisk walk toward my goals and l moving on with that analogy you actually enjoy the scenery a little bit more you get to have a little bit more flexibility you actually enjoy your days your meals your workouts because it's not so extreme yeah um yeah you easier easier said than done for people who don't feel good about themselves they've got a low self-image low self-esteem they feel that they need some kind of validation from something external, they're looking for something outside of themselves, a number on the scale, a compliment from people. You know, um, that saying, I'm not who I think I am, I'm not who you think I am, I am who I think you think I am. Mm. In other words, we perceive ourselves based on how we think other people perceive us. When we go out and we even think, you know, we interpret someone's look to us as like one of respect or admiration for our body, we feel great about ourselves. The same is true of the opposite. If we think someone's judging us, we'll judge ourselves. Um, and so if we're not feeling okay inside and we somehow feel that we need those external things, the opinions of others, the, um, all of that stuff, fitting into that dress and, and, and those jeans, we're always going to be searching. We're never going to feel okay inside because every time we think that, oh, well, that will, once I get that, then I'll feel okay. But then when you get that, there's something else because that whole that whole approach is like a bottomless void yes. where there will always be something else. And only when that happens, will I feel okay inside. So when you're not feeling okay inside, it's hard to enjoy the scenery. Hmm. But the thing is that it's and a simple switch. Sorry, I actually just want to link back to our first episode yes. ever, which was around, is that scale making you sad? So if you haven't listened to that episode, we delve right into that mindset. So yeah, exactly. Check it out. And and it's that exact same thing that causes us to then want to do the quick fix and and to sabotage and knowingly sabotage our, our emotions, our journey, our health that we're not going to be able to take the beautiful scenic route and enjoy life. But no, we're going to punish ourselves and we have to take extreme measures and all of that in order to one day hopefully feel okay inside. Um, really, we need to 
to have, we need to be the type of CEO that of ourselves that we say, you know what, I'm not going to sabotage the future of this, of this body and this mind by just trying to satisfy what I want right now. You don't want to sacrifice what you want most for what you want right now. Mm. And when you feel that you are doing that, it's exactly that. It's a feeling. It's being driven by an emotion. You got to ask yourself, what is causing me to feel this way? Chances are what's causing you to feel this way is that you feel that there's something outside of you to make you, that, that, that you're depending on to make you feel okay inside. And so the next step would be watch episode one uh, or listen to episode yes, one listen to episode of the one. podcast. Um, but that's, that's really important to identify the voice in your head. Let's, let's, let's call that voice. What, was, what did you call the voice earlier? The short-term sister. The short-term sister. When the short-term sister is saying to you, whispering into your ear, you know, do it. <laughs> and you know that you shouldn't because it's that kind of short-term thinking. You just want to get those quick results. And you just got to actually tell that short-term sister to just leave. Yeah, no, we, we're, not, we're not here for you anymore, short-term sister. The short-term sister is out and the long-term lean girl is in. And that short-term sister is going to crop up and you have to be ready for her. And you just need to, in that moment, remind yourself, you know what, I'm doing this for the long term. And I want to challenge you. What if you used the entire year, the entire 2024, to have a long-term vision, to work slowly, steadily and sustainably towards your lean body goals and imagine if every month let's say every month you were losing two kilograms where would you be at the end of the year right that would be a fantastic result instead of ending up at the end of the year putting in so much effort wheel spinning and actually you're worse off, worse off. than when yeah. you started and you know you're saying this for effect to be um uh, to be conservative and say like, even if it took a year, but the truth is that we actually overestimate what we can do in the short term and we underestimate what we can do in the long term. And because of that overestimation of the short term, we also then fall for the trap of doing something super drastic and then it's just not sustainable. And then you just kind of yo-yo, yeah, then yeah. suddenly you're eating so much, then you think you got to do something drastic again. Just flipping, get the lean body lab and just do it right the first time. If that, I don't know who that girl was who said that to you, that she's going to do something drastic first. I just, I know how it's changed my life, you know, and, and uh, you know, I'm a lean girl at heart. You know? oh, yeah. You're one of the first lean girls then. I, know, yeah, I was I'll one of the first lean girls. You were yeah. one of the first lean girls. You, we'll get you a t-shirt to prove it. Oh, uh, yes. Where's my vest? <laughs> Your vest, I know. It's extra small. I really hope that this resonated with you. I hope that it met you where you were at and at the right time when you have maybe been tiptoeing around what kind of strategy you should use to build your leanest body ever in 2024. And I hope that we have convinced you. I hope that it is settled in. And I really, I, I hope that when that short-term sister is sitting on your shoulder, you're going to say, you know what, honey? You belong in 2023. 2024 is going to be the year I build a lean, strong, sculpted body in a way that I actually love. In a way that every single week I love my meals. I love my workouts. I know that I'm moving forward and I'm doing it in a way that allows me to be flexible, to have fun with it. And ironically, I have a feeling that this is going to get you the fastest progress ever. I think it's more than a feeling. It's more than a hope. We've seen the evidence Damn, you were that's tr that's true. Yeah. I was playing it down. You were playing it I'm down. Pretty, I don't know why. I'm pretty damn sure, actually. I put money on that. I put money <laughs> on that shit. That this is going to be the year. If that's the strategy it's that the you choose. the year of the long-term lingo. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. Love it. I hope that this resonated with you. We want to hear from you. Let us know down in the comment box if you are going to be a long-term lean girl this year. And we also love to know in the comments what topics you are struggling with. What is something, a mindset, something around motivation, something that you feel like would help you on your fitness journey because that's what we're here for. That's what we're passionate about. We are combining the science of fat loss and the how with that mindset. What is it that's holding us back from actually moving forward and making progress? And we hope that with every episode that you listen to, you're getting another little tool in your toolbox to help you to make more progress and also do it in a way that makes you happy and fun.
find joy and peace along this journey. So I hope that you enjoyed listening. We'll be back every single week. You will find a new episode of the Lean Girl Fitcast on whatever platform you listen to. And last but not least, please do share this with anyone that you think could benefit from this. If you know anyone that's a bit of a short-term sister, send it on to her. I'm sure that she will get great value from it and we can start uh, spreading and sharing all of these Lean Girl tools. Don't forget to follow us on social media, on Instagram, where we share daily tools around fat loss and fitness and Gilan shares unbelievable stuff around mindset. So if you are a business babe, you better be following. It's at gilan.co. That's it. On Instagram. Um, and we will check you guys next week on the Lean Girl Fitcast. Oh, 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 oh,